Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be using the 12x12 collection pack called Winter Chalet. Such a pretty 12x12 collection kit. It has some beautiful pattern papers along with some fabulous stickers. And then there is a stamp set and coordinating die set that coordinate with the Winter Chalet. These are the Winter Chalet stamp and die sets. We're going to be using this on our project today. I thought we would shake a little bit and create something a little bit different than a typical card. I know a while back I had created a trifle card and it was really popular, but today we're going to be creating a tunnel card. I love tunnel cards. I haven't made one and I thought we would do this together. This is a fun kit. This is the value pack, tunnel card value pack. There are six tunnel cards in here that make it super easy to create and uh, put together and I thought it'd go perfect with our winter chalet scene. So we are going to jump in and get started. First we're going to take a look at some of the pattern papers in here. I love the blues and browns of this collection pack. And again, this is a 12 by 12 collection pack. Okay, these are all the pattern papers. They are double-sided, so this sheet will have this pattern behind it. You can see here. I like to kind of spread them out to see what we're going to use for our project today. And I want to create a wintry scene, so I think, and I love stripes. Oh, I love the plaid. Well, let's face it, I just love them all. <laughs> so I'm going to take the plaid. And I'm going to take the blue, definitely, and we'll take the tan. And then I also want, you know, I think I'm going to take this blue. And then I'm also going to take, do we want stripes? No, I think we want, and I think I want this. So I, I'm, I chose these four patterns to work with our project today although they all are pretty fabulous. I'm gonna put all these off to the side, and you know what I love? I love that there's cut-aparts too. We're gonna to use a few of these on our project too, but not right this second. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take our paper trimmer and trim these down. I trimmed them down to six by six inch panels. I just quartered my 12 by 12 cardstock. It just makes it easier. Um, to work with, especially for cards. I, I love doing this. Now I have each one of my elements to create my tunnel card. There's three pieces. I have window number two is this piece here, and there are pre-score pre -score lines on here. So all you have to do is reinforce those score lines. If you want to bring in your bone folder, you can. Just go over there, and it even has window number two on here. And I'm going to do the same with this. For this piece that has window number two, what I'm going to do is go forward and backward with this to reinforce these score lines. Just breaking those fibers makes it easier. Okay, so this is what this one looks like when it's all done. And then we have this piece that looks like a card base, but one end is bigger than the other. And that's easy to fold over and reinforce the score line. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and add some pattern paper to each one of these elements. We're going to start with our first window. Window is window one will be the most prominent window when you open up your card. So I'm going to use my plaid paper. This measures between the score lines when you fold it on this one here and this one here. If you fold in those score lines, this measures um, three and five eighths by five and a half inches, and so does this one. So we, I want to do slightly smaller than three and five eighths. So we're going to go three and a half inches by five and a half inches. So I'll have a white border on the left and the right. Bringing in my paper trimmer, I'm just going to trim it three and a half inches. Actually, we can do both cards at once. I'm going to do this this one here, and we're also going to do. Let's see. I think we're going to do this one. So we'll just, I'm going to cut them all at once here. Just going to line them up. Trim it three and a half inches. 
and then I'm going to turn it and trim at five and a half inches and keep these pieces. You can always use them on another project. So we have panels, three panels that measure three and a half inches by five and a half inches. What we're going to do is take the one that goes in the forefront for window number one. We're going to add some adhesive to it and I'm going to go around the edges. Let me add a little bit down the middle too. And of course this is going to leave me a little bit of a border again on the left and right so you want to make sure it's just evenly spaced. Okay, that's this one. And then with window number two, I'm going to flatten out those score lines for just a minute. I'm going to take the tan colored cardstock and do the same thing. We're going to add this right down the middle leaving a little bit of a border of white on the left and the right. Like so. Now with this piece, this is going to go on our background. So if you fold over your box like this, what we're going to do is open it, take this piece, and we're going to tack this down on the inside. And this one will leave a little bit of a border too. So we have, so it looks like this. And then we have this. Now after we have this done, we need to do, we need to die cut out our windows. This is where any nesting die that you have will come in really handy. So I'm going to be using the Photo Plays A2 rounded rectangles love this set and I'm going to take two that are right next to each other in the middle. I think that's going to work perfectly. I'm going to take the largest. Largest is going to go on window number one, the larger piece. The smaller one is going to go on window number two. Now we need to perfectly center these so they line up beautifully on our card. So to do that we need to die cut out this one first. I'm just going to use some low tack tape and we're going to tack this down right in the middle where we want it, evenly spacing it from left to right, like so. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. And it die cut out beautifully. It, you have a, two layers of cardstock here, but it die cut with no problem. And I think it's because of the weight of the tunnel cards. Now what we're going to do is take this panel I'm going to fold in these flaps for this card and what we're going to do is flip this card around here, line up this edge at the score line, just inside the score line. We're going to fit this panel inside these two score lines. And then I am going to use those tape temporarily. We'll tack it down so it doesn't shift. And then I'm going to flip this over and then take this die and position this where I want it on um, my window number two. And then I'm going to add my low tech tape. And I am tucking it actually underneath the top layer like so. And then I can remove the top layer. I can actually remove these two. I'll open this up and then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine and I know it's perfectly lined up. And we'll keep this. We can use this for the front of our card. And so we have two windows that if I line it up behind here, they're going to be perfectly positioned like so. I'm going to create a snowbank. We are going to, two of them actually, we're going to be using the photo play um, heels and snow banks double stitch dies. These are so nice because they're stitching on both sides. So if you stitch, if you die cut out one with one die cut, you can create two snow banks. So I'm going to die cut out this panel. It's a card front panel, slightly smaller. I'm going to run this through my die cut machine and we're going to create a couple of snow banks. I went ahead and die cut out my heels and my snow banks. I did, instead of just doing two, I'm going to snip this off here. Instead of just doing two, I did three. 
I want one in the very far background. So let's start with this slam. Let's start with this one. I'm going to take all three of my snowbanks and I'm going to trim them down to three and a half inches. This way I know the, the width of these are perfect for my panel here. So let's trim these down to three and a half inches. Okay. Now we're just going to adjust our snowbanks how we want them. And I'm going to take our first snowbank and put it on the very back of our project here. And I'm just going to tape this directly over my pattern paper. Now I'm going to take my next snowbank and we're going to put it on our window number two, which is the, the individual piece here. I want it lower than this one. So a good placement for this would be here. And just using a pencil, I'm going to mark this. And then I'm going to use my paper trimmer and trim this off. Probably about a half of an inch, a little over half of an inch. And while we have our paper trimmer out, I'm going to take this one and then we're going to go even lower than this one. And I think at, we'll go this. We'll trim about one and a quarter inch off of here. We're going to take our next size snowbank. I already put adhesive behind here. We're going to tack this behind our window. Like so. And then we're going to take this last piece and we're going to line this up on the inside of our window. Like so. And once you layer them together, let's show you what it looks like. We have a whole bunch of hillsides. I love that. Okay. Now I want to create some uh, floating uh, snowflakes. To do that, we're going to just do an extra step using some embossable um, acetate. Okay. In our stamp set, we have some snowflakes. I'm going to go ahead and take out our stamp set next. I'm going to treat my embossable window plastic with my anti-static powder tool. And then we're going to stamp some snowflakes on our acetate. These are so pretty. Now, if you have a watermark ink, you can use that. I'm using a white pigment ink to do my stamping. This way I can see exactly where my snowflakes are going to go. And I'm going to just stamp a few here. And when you stamp on both of these, you want to make sure that they're in different spots. We're going to stamp. The smaller one is really pretty. Stamp two of those. And then we're going to take the smallest of the snowflake here and we're going to stamp on the acetate as well. And I think that's going to work out great. You can kind of actually line, line them up to see where they're going to go. Maybe one more over here. Since this is embossable, we're going to take some white embossing powder. And I'm going to scoop it over the acetate. This kind of looks like a hot mess, but once you tap it, Okay, so if you have any excess, you can just go over it. But I think for the most part that this is just powder. So that one's done. And I'm going to do the same thing to this snowflake acetate. Okay, and I think that's going to work out great. I'm going to use my heat gun. And we're going to melt the embossing powder on these acetate. Okay, everything is melted. I'm going to give this a second to dry. Just using a towel, we're just going to buff away that loose powder that we had added. And we have some snowflakes. We're going to go back to creating our card here. 
now that our windows are done, just using my scissors, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And we're going to place this acetate on the inside of those score lines, on the inside of the window. So we're going to just trim away so it fits in our window here. We're going to add some adhesive all along our window and also at the bottom of our snowbank here. And then we'll tack down. And I have a little overhanging. I'm just going to use my scissors and trim away the excess. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Now this, oops, we're going to add a little adhesive on the bottom of our snowbank. Now this is going to do two things. Since we're going to be using some stickers in our 12 by 12 Winter Chalet collection pack, the acetate is going to create that tunnel look, but it's also going to give me um, a place to adhere my stickers. Flip them around, and this is what they look like now. Okay, we are going to go ahead and go through our sticker pack and decorate the inside of our card. To do that, we need some elements here. I know in the very back I want these trees. And the nice thing is you can just kind of guesstimate where you want them. And I'm going to put a sticker here. And I'm going to use a smaller one also. I think I'm going to use a smaller one on this, on this side. And you can kind of play around with your placement too, before you press down really good to figure out your commi commitment. But I think that's going to work out great. Okay, and then after we have our trees, I definitely want a snowman. The snowman we're going to put in the forefront here. And I'm just going to stick him down, maybe over here. Okay, I'll have my snowman there. It's all, I love the tunnel look already. Okay, and then we have, what other elements we have here? We even have a little barn that we can put in our background. We can add this in our background. I'm going to tuck the barn under here. Like so. And I'm thinking this is looking really fun. Now I, I think that's plenty amount of elements for our tunnel card. I do want to add a sentiment though for the inside of my tunnel card. I think we're going to take Let It Snow. And I'm going to just tack this down just before the score line. I'm going to tack down this little sentiment here. And I think that's going to work out great. Let's see. Kind of do a little preview. I think that looks wonderful. Now before we finish creating our tunnel card, I'm going to put these off to the side. And we're going to take this piece. This is the last panel that doesn't have no writing, but it has one score line. I already folded, folded it, and when you fold it, you want to make sure that it's a card front size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So the inside piece is slightly smaller, okay? We're going to open it up, and then taking this piece of pattern paper, I'm going to trim this down. So this measures, we're going to trim this down to three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. So we're going to add some adhesive and we're going to tack this down to the front of our card, making sure those deer and our, our sled are right side up. Wonderful. And then these are the leftover pieces that we use for our windows, window one and window two. We're going to layer these both together. Wonderful. And we're going to bring back our rounded die set. This is our A2 rounded rectangles. And I'm taking a slightly smaller, one more size smaller die. And then this is where the cut aparts come in. 
I'm gonna take our cut apart sheet and I think this is gonna die cut out my warm winter wishes beautifully. So I'm gonna just trim away this cut apart here. Wonderful. And I'm gonna line up my die that's one size smaller, place it down here in the middle. I'm just gonna tack this down and run this through my die cut machine. Okay, so we ran this through, and then this is gonna fit beautifully and right in the center of our rounded rectangles. We'll just tack this down. I'm gonna put some foam tape behind my rounded rectangles, and then this is gonna go on the front of our card. Wonderful. Now we get to put together our tunnel card and it's very, very easy. We're gonna take, this is window two. I'm gonna use score tape, but if you wanna use your tape runner, you can, or if you wanna use glue, you can. Score tape is just quicker. Um, it's a real strong adhesive and I have lots of it. So we're gonna use score tape and I'm just gonna add a piece to the left and to the right. And then after I remove the release paper, I'm gonna line the right side of window number two on just in front of our score line here. I'm gonna go, you wanna line this up on, you have a score line here, one, two, on the third score line, line it up, and then you're gonna fold this over and let that tack down like so. So basically we have this going on so far. It kind of looks like a reverse book. <laughs> and then after we have this done, I'm gonna take the front of my card, we're gonna open it up, and I'm gonna add score tape along the inside here. I'm gonna remove the release paper. Then I'm gonna take this portion that we just created and there is a score line here. We're gonna place this just inside the score line. This just, you wanna just make sure that it folds nicely. Okay, so now we have three pieces that look like this. Pretty easy peasy so far. We already removed the release paper off of here. Now what we're gonna do is fold this over and tack this down like so, to where it's all flat. You can hold it up and this is what it looks like now. It's coming together beautifully. While laying this flat, you can just press it down. What we're gonna do next is take some more of our score tape or adhesive, and then we're gonna, I, since this is 1 8 of an inch score tape, we're gonna go ahead and add two strips. And then I'm just gonna use my craft pick and we'll remove the release paper here. And here, it's pretty easy to put together. Okay, and make sure it's flattened. Fold this, the front of your card base over like so. Press down really good. If you wanna use your bone folder, you can. And it is nice and flat for being a tunnel card. It's very wonderful. And there is even a little bit of dimension on here, which we're gonna doctor up the front of our card. These are the layers. This is what it looks like. You have a cute little winter scene. I just think this is so neat and plenty of room to write your message. I just love that. And you can add any kind of scene that you want to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add a, um, a few more elements using our sticker sheet here. I love the snowflakes here. I love the wood grain snowflake. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put a foam square behind here. I put some powder from my anti-static powder tool behind the sticker, and then I can just remove the release paper and we're gonna add our snowflake. And I'm gonna add it up here. We're gonna do some layering if we can. I love to layer snowflakes. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing to a slightly smaller snowflake. We'll just tap some powder over the back so it doesn't stick. And then I'll remove the release paper and we're going to add, oops, we'll add this. I love to add layers and we'll add that right over the top of there. I went ahead and doubled up on some white twine and created a bow. I'm going to add a glue dot behind it and kind of roll that glue dot behind the knot. And I'm going to place this in the center of those snowflakes, like so. In our sticker set, this is, there is Welcome Winter. I'm going to take this and we're going to flip this around. I'm going to add some foam tape behind here. And again, we can get rid of, before we remove the release paper, it's easier just to go over it with a little bit of your anti-static powder that you use for your embossing. It just, and then you can remove your sticker. I'm going to place this just under the warm winter wishes. And then for finishing touches, I'm going to bring in some clear sequins. Just using a little bit of glue. Okay, and I think that is the perfect amount of sparkle. And that will complete our project today using the tunnel card value pack. Love that. Makes it cre makes creating tunnel cards super easy using especially using a beautiful 12 by 12 winter chalet collection kit. Super fun card. Lots of dimension. And I think the recipient will just love it. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish you a lovely day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.